Dougie here, and this is my channel where I normally talk about dev tips, automation, talking about some building some projects, and I'll, I'll try to get you to show up to my Twitch streams as well. Um, but speaking of which, this is finally the video that I go through my entire setup, all the equipment that I've sort of collected over the, the years, and how I get my videos recorded for YouTube as well as the live streaming on Twitch as well. So I hope you enjoy. Uh, one thing to point out, this video I did record about a month ago around Christmas time, which is why there's a Christmas tree behind me. Uh, actually, there's no Christmas tree behind me now uh, because I'm in a different location. I'm in a temporary location for the next couple months. Uh, well, I will be live streaming. Uh, I think I have most of my setup here, uh, but everything you see in this video is what I have here in this blank room. So uh, enjoy, uh, make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you on the other side. Let's jump into the first category, uh, cameras. What I'm shooting on right now is a Canon M200. Uh, this is a camera I picked up uh, about a month and a half ago. Um, I actually was touring at the idea of getting an actual mirrorless camera to do streaming, recording videos, zoom calls. Uh, I've been using a couple of different Logitech cameras previously. Um, I used the C920, which is pretty common. Uh, they got pretty pricey earlier this year. And then I got a Logitech Brio um, from the GitHub satellite talk that I gave. Uh, GitHub satellite, uh, well GitHub basically gave all speakers a conference kit. And I'll talk about the mic they sent me too as well, which I don't use very often, but I'll talk about it too as well, because I think it's a great starter mic. Um, so the Logitech Brio uh, is something that I use as my backup camera. If I don't have, if I took the camera off the stand or for whatever reason, which I don't really do very often, I have a backup camera in case I just need to quickly have a camera and shot. Uh, it's not great. It's actually pretty bad of a camera. It's a popular camera, but it doesn't really do very great with the, it doesn't really do justice to like me and what I look like in real life. So what I have here is M200 and I sort of just skated right back. The M200 is a, it's a 4K uh, cropped sensor. Uh, so I do get 4K video off of it. I don't use 4K, uh, it's a big image. Uh, I wanna start doing some 4K video uh, for the channel cause I, uh, I have access to a 4K cropped image. And I think if I crop the image, I could actually take this wide angle lens uh, and sort of get this much and make it like a headshot. Um, but I don't have really a, a big use for it. I mean, if you just have my face at 4K, uh, I don't know what, what value that provides unless I was doing a serious low light shot. But, um, so that's the M200. I do want to mention, do I also have a, the Sigma 16 millimeter wide angle lens. So that's how I'm getting the angle of also getting a really interesting shutter speed, uh, on the Christmas tree as well. So you can actually see the lights. Those are actually not, that's not the tree doing that. That's a shutter speed actually letting in the light. Um, so I get a really cool effect on that. I get a cool effect on the, the light cube back there as well. Um, so the six Sigma 16 millimeter lens, uh, think media has a YouTube channel. I did a lot of research. Uh, it was either between the Sony, uh, at a 60 something a six series or the Canon M 200. They're both pretty comparable, uh, and also comparable in price wise because I already had a Canon camera, uh, the Canon rebel that I was recording all my YouTube videos from. Uh, I felt like it would be make a lot of sense to, to stick with Canon. Uh, I already have the app. I already have some of the attachments, even though the Rebel is quite a few years old, so not a lot of stuff transitions over. But it was just, it just made a lot of sense to go with the Canon for this. Um, and the Sigma lens also works with the Canon, and it has the, the mount for it. So that's what I'm using. Um, you should definitely do your research if you're interested in buying your own camera. Uh, this was what worked for me, uh, and actually I like it. So. Uh, I'm going to stick with it and I think I might actually pick up a second camera down the road. I didn't mention this, but I flipped my desk around to leverage this camera and get the sort of the bokeh depth of field too as well. You can see sort of now if I move in, the autofocus is silent, it's quiet. Uh, my Canon Rebel that I was using, and I say mine, it's actually my wife's, um, and it was just a manual adjustment. Autofocus, but the sound was just, yeah, it was quite annoying and you can actually pick it up in the, the mic. So I always had to do manual focus, which a lot of my videos, if you go back and look at any of the last couple of videos I've done, uh, you'll see in, that some videos actually just legitimately is out of focus. And it's because I'll get the shot ready and then I'll move the chair over and then I'm out of focus for the entire video. And it's either re-record the entire video or move on with it. So um, yeah, 
I, I just enjoy this this camera a ton. Uh, the only the only limitation I have with it, uh, and this is I should probably just move on because this is starting to be a product review. But the one limitation I have is for the same thing with all DSLRs, the recording length uh, on card is about 30 minutes. So what I do is actually instead of record it directly on camera, I do have a um, they do have a Canon USB camera utility that you can actually plug in and get your camera as a webcam, which is another reason why I chose this. Uh, I record through OBS, so all my videos moving forward with this camera will be recorded in OBS live. Uh, it gives me the ability to use the Stream Deck and do switching. Uh, for whatever reason, I'm not using it for this, uh, mainly because the Stream Deck connected to my other PC, which I'll get to in the next section. But that's it for cameras. Uh, I'm gonna move on for that because I think I spent way too much time on that and for the, the context of, uh, I don't have a timer for, <laughs> I really, I forgot to put a timer on for the, the countdown for the video. So I have no idea how long that was. And I want to talk about the next section, which is audio. So audio is something that I've, I have a background. Um, I, I have a background in playing music. I have a lot of instruments. Actually, one day when I give a full tour, I'll show off all the guitars and stuff like that, that I have over there. Um, but I play a lot of music. I've been playing music for a long time. I've had this mic. I actually chose prior to doing any video uh, I got this for podcasting specifically and this is a Rode Procaster I'm not using it oh you know what that's gonna be annoying so the audio was probably picking up back there I actually forgot to put this on mute um, <laughs> the entire time so we were just picking up random computer noise probably the first part of this video but I mentioned that because audio is important. Uh, and this is what I use for all my Zoom calls. I've got a mixer. Uh, it's a Behringer mixer. And this mi Behringer mixer I picked up, uh, actually when I started at GitHub. Uh, this is the same, this between this mic and this Behringer mixer, which I'll show in the B-roll. Um, this is what I was using when I worked at my previous employer to do podcasting. Um, and that combo setup worked really well. Uh, so I actually leveraged this setup to not only do it for then, I also do it here for my day to day. So that mixer is always plugged into my Mac and it also drives all the audio for all my Zoom calls. Um, and yeah, it's actually worked out well. And I've been doing that for three years going on in January full time. So I did want to mention too as well, I do have a mute switch, which that's what I'm using now. I have a hardware mute switch. Uh, that really, what that does is it, it does what it says. It basically, it mutes that mic, only that mic. Uh, and that's so I can like do a cough or if I'm on stream and I need to like talk off camera to my kids or my wife, I'm able to do that and, and not sort of interrupt. Uh, also, I found it much easier than finding the zoom button, uh, the mute button on zoom. So sorry, that's actually my zoom setup. And I, I mentioned I'll talk stream and YouTube. So I've actually had three setups. So this, that's my zoom setup. My streaming setup is the same mic. So actually what I've done is I've taken two cables. I split the cable. Uh, so I have my, that mic going into two different mixers. Uh, and I do this intentionally because I didn't want to have to unplug and plug in something every single time. Um, at the moment for this video, I have to unplug and plug in my third mic, uh, which I'll talk about in a second. And I'm going to try to get that a permanent setup too as well. But this is all new for me, so I haven't got that permanent yet. But what I'm getting at is I have a splitter, the mute switch mutes, not only my my Zoom mixer, I've got also got a mixer for my live streaming setup, which connects to my PC, which I'll mention more about in a sec. Uh, and that's connected to a Go XLR. The Go XLR is a great device. Uh, you should definitely just Google it. There's a lot of reviews on YouTube. Uh, check out um, the mixer. It's, I think it's a, it's it's an amazing device um, when it works. Uh, I do want to give the caveat that I don't know what the deal is with the software, but whatever reason. It works as long as you reset it every time you go to use it. So every time I go to on stream, I reset the device by just um, changing my settings. My I have preset settings. Uh, if I change from one setting or one preset to another preset, uh, which I have one for presentations, I have one for streaming, and I have one for when me and my son do YouTube videos. We do have a YouTube account uh, where we play games, which you can search for that. I don't really publicly share that a lot, but some people have found it and, and have enjoyed it. I have a whole setup just for me and him and how we use a mic. I uh, use the mic when both, we only use one mic between the both of us to do the, the gaming videos on YouTube. So I just have to set the presets and then it works, but it's got a sampler, 
Uh, it's got a voice changer. It's got a, yeah, I mean, equalizer. It's all built in in the software. And I love it, it especially when it works. So that's my audio setup for Zoom calls, which connects to my, my MacBook. Uh, and then I have the Go XLR for the live streaming. I also have a mic directly above my head, and uh, that's the Rode NGT2. NGT2. Um, that mic is specifically, it's a shotgun mic, uh, and it's made, like a lot of YouTubers, they use shotgun mics, um, so that way you don't have to worry about a lapel, or you don't have to worry about having a mic messing up your shot in camera, or you, like if, like with the road, I don't have to actually worry about if I'm not facing the camera because it's still gonna pick up. Um, and what I do is I have this like, I think if you move, if I move, you kind of can see it, yeah. So you can see the shadow uh, directly above my head. Uh, that's exactly, like it's really right there. Um, and it's just, it picks up. Uh, it tends to be, it does a great job on the bass, um, but also does a great job at clipping. So I always have to make sure that, uh, I think I've done a lot of testing with this. So this mic I've had a lot of experience with, and I think I've got to the point where the YouTube videos, you can actually hear what I'm saying and it's it's clear. And that's the mic. The mic is actually connected on a boom stand, actually <laughs> the boom stand that's like right there. Um, I have this red cable because, uh, well, I just hit the boom stand. So you definitely heard that. You definitely know the mic's there. Uh, but I have this red cable. I made the, the best quality cable I could get. I could not get in black, um, but I could get in red. And what was really important to me is actually having a braided cable, XLR cable, uh, that it was high quality because I have to run this on phantom power from the mixer uh, because it's a condenser mic. It's all details that you probably don't really care about, but that's why it's red. That co covers all the sort of mics that I've used, that I'm using now. Uh, Rode NG2, I've got the Procaster, uh, Rode Procaster. I don't think I actually said the name of the mic, but this is the, the Rode Procaster. Uh, so definitely check it out. Um, the one thing I do want to mention about this mic is that this mic is actually uh, pretty affordable, at least when I bought it. Prices might have gone up, but it was less than 200 bucks when I picked it up. And at the time, uh, back in what, 2018? Even before that, 2017, when I was setting up a podcasting studio at Netlify, uh, we decided on the Procaster because the Shure SM7Bs, the price had gone up like 100 bucks. Uh, and for, because podcasting, which is, it just got popular and like you, you would see Joe Rogan with the SMB, SM7B, a sure SM7B right in front of the, his face. Um, uh, so that'd be the mic everybody would go for. Uh, so the price is skyrocketed. Uh, I remember back in the day when I was looking at it and it was like 220 bucks back when I was in college. And I wish I picked one up then because those things last forever. And then I wanted to share because I mentioned the, I spent a lot of time talking about the Logic, Logitech, uh, SM7B. Uh, this is the blue Yeti X, uh, and now you can see the bokeh. This is why, <laughs> this is why I switched cameras because now I can do stuff like this, these nice little product shots. Um, but yeah, this is the blue Yeti X. Uh, this is the, an exceptional microphone. It's a great microphone, takes USB, uh, which you can, you can see here. Anyway, it's just, it's just too close. Anyway, it is, it takes a USB. It's got a headphone. Uh, it's got a USB jack there. Uh, you'd also put it on a mount too as well. That's what that is. Um, this is a great microphone. Uh, and if you don't want a, a mixer and all this other stuff that I'm saying, I recommend if you're going to start today, just get a, get a USB microphone. Uh, if you don't want to get all the stuff, like if I could, I would take all the stuff off my desk, go USB only. But I do like the features that I get with those two mixers and the two situations that I use. Um, so I do want to talk about my computers. I do have, at the moment, I'm working on a touch bar MacBook Pro uh, 15 inch from 2018. Uh, that's my MacBook. I started off my everything, doing everything from the MacBook. I would stream with the MacBook, record video for the MacBook. I'm recording this video from the MacBook. Um, and this, I just, I like Apple. I like, I like the Mac operating system a lot. Uh, I just, it's intuitive to me. I've been using it for, since college, before college. Um, did a lot of music production and stuff like that. So I'm just like so used to that system and all the, the hotkeys and shortcuts that I prefer to do everything from there. But the thing that's in, it's not, it's not there. Like if I try to stream or if I try to record this video while also rendering another video or playing YouTube or whatever it is, you can, you can feel the thing slowing down. Um, for the most part, it's fine. 
it just I just need to do a little less like kill docker and postgres or whatever it is like start turning stuff off so it does it definitely hits its limitations especially with editing video in premiere or anything like that i actually picked up a windows pc earlier this year uh back in uh april actually because i got the pc specifically for playing games and doing a little bit of video stuff that i couldn't do on the on the mac and now it's become my full-time streaming pc so if you ever see me live stream on twitch it's all happening from that PC. Um, I, I love the thing to death. Uh, I'm actually enjoying Windows a little bit, even though I only use it like twice a week. Um, and then weekends, I guess. I don't, I'm playing a lot of Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, talked about the Mac, the Mac being 28 for 15 inch. Uh, not great for the airplane. Uh, another computer not great for the airplane is my PC. Now, the PC, the specs about it, it's like a terabyte hard drive, which is not amazing, but it's SSD. So that's the one thing I didn't care about. Uh, the only thing I really cared about when picking this up, because this is off the shelf, I just picked it up off of Amazon, is it has a, a NVIDIA graphics card. Uh, and NVIDIA, mainly because I'm just familiar with that and what it can do. Um, but also NVIDIA, NVIDIA GTX uh, 1660 is the actual card. And I just wanted something fast enough just to play enough stuff but also something fast enough that I can live stream at 1080p and 60 frames a second if I want to at the moment I only do 30 frames but I just wanted something that could just do that because what was happening with my MacBook is I would stream at 720p at 30 frames but also I had to lower the bitrate a ton because it just could not keep up uh, and that's what I was talking about with the the MacBook 2018 it just could not keep up so that's the PC I actually have this connected through a Elgato HD60. So what, the way I stream my Mac on Twitch through a streaming PC is I have a capture card, which is external HD60, which I'll, uh, I should just throw a screenshot in there because I didn't get a picture of it. Essentially that's what's capturing my my coding, my live coding on the PC. And the reason I do the, the coding on the PC, uh, I stream through the PC and I code still on the Mac because I could still write code on the PC, is really just processing power. There's some things that are intensive. Uh, if I run tests, um, so I, I've been doing contributions to Node.js. If I run those tests while streaming, the entire, it'll just take the stream down. So I don't want my, my processing power to impact what's streaming, what's being recorded. So if I do screencasts, doing trainings, tutorials, uh, doing Zoom calls, doing presentations, I want to make sure that the streaming is not going to be impacted by what I'm presenting. So that's why I use a capture card and have two separate computers to do too. Uh, that is pretty much it. Like if this computer was like, if the Mac was packed out and could do all that by itself, then I wouldn't need the streaming PC. And if the streaming PC was, if I knew enough about writing code on Windows, I would probably just use the Windows machine. But I just have so much domain specific knowledge on Mac that I can't really leave it yet. Actually, I won't ever leave it. I'll never leave you, Mac. All right, so those are the computers. I do want to talk about the lights. The lights are really important. Um, really quick, uh, I do have a pizza, neon pizza sign. That is something I picked up as sort of like a <laughs> congratulations. I did a, an event, Open Source Contributor Summit, uh, back in uh, October. And as a sort of parting prize to myself and saying, hey, you should just enjoy the fact that you did an event uh, and people showed up. Uh, so I bought myself a, a neon sign to remind myself of that. Uh, it was like something I've been eyeing on for like six months and I was like, you know what? I get paid a developer salary. I should, I should treat myself. So I, I didn't treat myself to a neon sign. Uh, it's just there to sort of bring the room together. Uh, real quick, I do have a key light. Um, I've got key lights. So I've got Elgato key lights. Uh, I've got a main Elgato key light that's sort of doing the fill. It does a bit of the, the fill, the room fill. This is what I was lighting up my green screen with, uh, with this light over here on the right. And then the other light on the left is a key light air that in addition to the Brio in the Yeti X that I just showed earlier, uh, I was also given the key light for that same conference. So again, swag for conference speaking, uh, super helpful. Uh, it actually got me really interested in the Elgato key light and made me okay with making the purchase of the actual the bigger version of it, uh, which is about 200 bucks US. Yeah, it was enough money that I had to think about it <laughs> and, uh, you know, crunch some numbers. So I know I picked that up and what I love about it is you can control the lights 
through the software. So that's great because I can pull up my phone, turn off this light, turn that light on, make this a little more darker, change the color or so the vibrance of the color. I don't know anything about lighting, but that's what I got over here. Um, love it to death. It's super easy. I used to have these like big old fill photo lights that would take up way too much space. It would actually sit on this boom stand uh, and then I'd have to walk around it. My wife would have to walk around it. My kids would knock it over. So then I had to get sandbags <laughs> so that way no one would knock it over. So yeah, it was just too much. The beauty of this is I can just mount these to directly to the desk and we're good to go. And I can turn the lights off from my phone. If I forget, hey, I'm not working anymore, turn off the lights. Um, yeah, highly recommend remote controls, uh, controlling stuff with your phone. Uh, makes it so much easier. Also, I, I can't state this enough. Like being able to just have everything mounted to the desk and then walk away and not have to set up stuff. The only thing, every time I do a video, the only thing I set up is this, this mic above my head. So if I ever want to do a YouTube video, I have to set up one mic and that's it. Everything else just sort of sits there, it works. And a lot of people have actually remarked on how quickly I can get videos out, how much content I've been creating this year. Uh, I honestly don't think I've done a ton. I just kind of had a really good like couple months. Um, but it really just comes down to once I figured out how to like do it, I just set it up. So that way all I can do is walk in, hit record, walk away <laughs> and then edit it like the next day. Cause I usually don't try to edit it and record the same day. It's just, it's just too much. So that way I give myself a some time to think if I actually enjoyed that video, if it's not good, I can also redo it. But anyway, what I'm getting at is everything's mounted to the desk. It, it just works. It's plugged in. I have enough cables that I don't have to borrow cables from other places. Yeah, definitely. If you're gonna do this, like set up yourself where you can succeed and not have to think about it too much. Yeah, and then the other thing I wanted to mention is I have these cubes that I picked them up on Amazon. It was really, I think it was at a Harris Heller vid video. Harris Heller is uh, another person that does live streaming, uh, not code, but gaming. Uh, I don't really watch a lot of his streams, but I do see his videos. Uh, here on YouTube and uh, he had like a sort of like gifts for Quick gifts for streamers or something. It was some video that uh, I've sort of followed off on watching every, every one of his videos But um, it was a video about something but it was sort of like these Things you could buy streamers for less than like 30 bucks or 50 bucks or whatever it was uh, and this was I think this was like 14 or 16 dollars um, US and what it does it just gives you light and I like it because, so this orange light is the same light that's back here. Uh, and what's cool is that it actually picks up pretty nice uh, on the camera. And it gives me like a little extra essence back there. Uh, Cause without that light, it just sort of feels kind of blah. So I usually have two of these, one directly behind me and then one right here. And this gives me a little light in the back. Um, I did have one where the tree is, the tree kind of took up that space, but when the tree comes down, then I'll have another uh, another one back there. But they're cordless, you charge them, and before you get on stream or turn on camera, set up the mic, set up the, the lights just by turning it on, and then you're good to go. Um, so that's, that's pretty much all for lighting. Uh, I do have a final section, and I think this video will be a little bit long, so uh, we'll figure out how to edit this down to make it <laughs> work uh, to be a proper YouTube video and not me just rambling about, you know, setting up mics, I don't know. I do have a other category, which it's kind of this fits in stuff I couldn't really fit into everything before. So first, my monitor, it's a 34 inch ultra wide. Actually, it's not an ultra wide, it's just a wide, extra wide, I don't know. Cause I feel like the ultra wides are supposed to be a little bit longer, but anyway, ultra wide monitor. Uh, I love this because I can actually break up <laughs> uh, my windows in three different sections. So I tend to have three Chrome length windows on the screen. Uh, it's also super helpful for having code on one side and then having the, you know, terminal open on the other end. Uh, I do also keep my MacBook on a roost stand, but it used to be my mobile setup. Actually, between the roost stand and the keyboard, which uh, the keyboard itself, I'll keep a link in the description below, but Magic Force, $49 mechanical keyboard. Uh, this one's got blue switches. I've got another one, which I use for streaming, which has got red switches or brown. I can't remember which one's quieter, but I use that for streaming. That way it's just not super clickety clackety on the mic. Um, but that one's connected to the 
streaming PC. Uh, they're basically the same keyboard, and one of them was legitimately they were used for traveling. Uh, I'd keep one in my bag for traveling, and then the roost stand, and then that was my travel kit for being on the road and, and doing work. And now it's my permanent setup because you know, I'm not traveling. I've been doing this thing where uh, a lot of the B-roll I've actually shot from my phone. Uh, I've actually been using my phones for streaming as well and having a third and a fourth camera. Uh, I've got a couple different old iPhones that still work and download apps for where I can actually leverage my iPhone as like my, a zoom camera or second zoom camera or a second wide angle shot or whatever. Um, so I do have mounted is my, what am I, iPhone 7? Which I think actually did, I think I mentioned this earlier too when I was talking about a neon light, but I don't know what got cut out in editing, but um, I do have that in the back. Highly recommend if you have any old iPhones, leverage those as cameras instead of buying a whole new camera. Uh, I spent a lot of time this year using my iPhones as extra cameras or just my main camera uh, while live streaming because I felt like that was a better camera than the old C920 that I was, I was leveraging before. So uh, you should have a look at that. Uh, I should probably do a video on that and how I sort of set up my iPhones as cameras. But so the last thing I just want to mention is that <laughs> I did a video where I was walking through my desk setup uh, in my previous incarnation, back when I was facing the wall and had the green screen. And I made a comment about the chair that I'm sitting in. Uh, quite a few times when I'm on stream, people ask me, what chair am I using? And I don't know. And I'm gonna tell you now that this is a noble epic gaming chair. You can't actually get this version, this chair. <laughs> it's not actually in stock anymore, um, but they do have other versions. So I do have like red stitching. Uh, I'll put a link in the one that has black stitching. This chair is probably twice as much as it would have cost when I first got it. I picked it up really just to, just to have a better chair. I, I spent two years working at Netlify uh, in office, but we had work from home days, Tuesday and Thursdays. And my chair for my work from home days was a folding chair. Uh, a folding chair, like the ones that you go to like concerts, it's like a lawn chair. I don't explain it. It's like a camping chair, I don't know. It's got cup holders. That was the reason why I have this chair uh, I kind of wish I got a, a little more comfortable chair, but you know, hindsight, uh, this one's working for me and you know, stand. My Apple watch tells me to stand. Uh, but with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, I'm going to do a follow up blog post. Uh, so that would follow me on Twitter, uh, B Dougie on Twitter. I'll tweet out when that blog post is live. Uh, if you did like this video too, as well, um, Please leave a comment below. Let me know uh, what was interesting. If you have any questions, follow up questions about any of the setup. If there are parts of the setup that I did not even mention because I thought, who cares about that? Uh, definitely let me know too as well. Um, I'm happy to get feedback. And I'm also happy to get ideas too as well. So if you have a better idea for cameras, um, let me know or link to your video. Um, how does this work, YouTube?